Hey everyone, are you ready to dive into the world of Flipper Zero with a twist? In today's video, we'll be leveraging the power of ChatGPT to create JavaScript for the Flipper Zero. And guess what? No prior programming skills are needed. This video is unlike other ChatGPT tutorials you've seen because we're zeroing in on JavaScript specifically for the Flipper Zero. The Flipper Zero is packed with awesome features. Keyboard emulation for those slick hacks. GPIO and serial port for all your electronic interfacing needs. Sub gigahertz capabilities for sending radio waves. And even a gyroscope if you have the video game module. New features are constantly being added to Flipper Zero JavaScript, so there's always something new to explore. If you need a specific feature that's not covered, don't hesitate to reach out on my Discord server. I'm here to help. Ready to jump in and start creating? Let's get started. I'll start with a legal disclaimer. Only mess with stuff you own. And this image was generated by AI. And it also made this beautiful 1920 by 1080 image with a legal disclaimer, which I think further emphasizes the point that you really should only be running these scripts on equipment you own. The first few attempts from ChatGPT may not do what you intended. My Flipper Zero Tutorials Wiki has a JavaScript page. If you scroll down, you'll find the supported capabilities listed. There are over 20 features available, such as bad USB keyboard emulation, GPIO, and sub gigahertz. The not supported section lists features that have not been exposed in JavaScript library yet. We'll start by asking ChatGPT to create a JavaScript program that prints Hello World on the Flipper Zero. It's important to understand the answers from ChatGPT are not always correct. JavaScript does not require a developer environment. Flipper Zero uses MJS, which is for microcontrollers. And even the code it generates may not do what you want. I'll bring up Windows Explorer. I'll right click, say new text document, and we'll name it ai.js and remove the .txt. Say yes to change the file name. Now we can right click on that and say open with and choose notepad. We'll click on the copy code to copy the code from the AI, and then we'll paste it into our notepad, save the file. In QFlipper, we'll go into SD card, and then we'll go to apps, and then we'll go to scripts. And then we'll drag our AI.js into that folder. And then on our flipper, we'll click on OK for apps, go to scripts, and then choose AI.js. It just says running AI.js and then done. We'll let AI know that we never saw the hello world message. It just said done. And so the important thing to understand is that the AI's answers are not always correct. So again, we'll go back to copy code for the new code. We'll replace our AI.js with the new file and save it. In QFlipper, we'll click back and then go to the files. And then we'll drag our updated AI.js into QFlipper. And then on the flipper, we'll click the back button and then run again to run our new AI.js. We'll be doing this process over and over again. And this time we got an error. So when I get an error like that, what I normally do is I tell the AI that I got this error and I try to type in exactly what I see on the screen. Uh, so const is not defined at AI.js colon four. And the number after the colon is the line number. And then when you have that, you're gonna to wanna to switch to line four and then copy that line to your clipboard and paste it in. Whenever I get an error, I tell it what the error was and I tell it the contents of that line. Now it's using things like furry, hal, lcd, init, which sounds like some of my recent videos, but it doesn't exist in JavaScript. So the problem is we haven't trained AI as to what the Flipper Zero really is and how to write programs for it. You can find a link to these files in the video description or the comments. We'll open up the intro.txt and copy it, and then we'll paste it into our chat GPT window. 
And then next, we'll take the training.js files and drag them into the chat window as well. Press Control Enter for a new line, and then type in your request, such as, can you create a JavaScript program that prints hello world on my Flipper Zero? And then press Enter to send the request. And now it's using those training files to understand the commands available. We'll copy that code and then replace our AI.js. We'll drag in our AI.js file. And then on our flipper, we'll run the AI.js script. And there it is, hello world. Sometimes the samples are kind of advanced, so we'll say that seems like a lot of code. Is there a simpler program? It gives us a nice one-line program. Copy the code to your flipper. I'm not going to show you the steps anymore. And then run the program. And there it is. It printed hello world. Next, we'll ask it to prompt for the name of the person and then print hello and their name. You can use the code it generates, but I also like to read the explanations. It says the back button will print hello world. We'll run our new script and this time we'll press the back button. And there it is, hello world. Let's run the script again and this time I'll type in my name. And now it says hello Derek. So now you're thinking the AI is trained and everything's perfect. Let's ask for a bad USB script that enters the 10 most popular four digit pins. After it enters a pin, it'll press enter and then wait one second before entering the next pin. I have no idea how it figures out what's popular, but if you're listed in those popular pins, you may want to change it. I'll copy the code and update my flipper, and then we'll run the JS file. I try to set focus to an empty notepad window since you never know what bad USB is going to type. It looks like we got an error, delay module load fail, and we'll go ahead and notify it of the failure and copy line two where our error is. And this will use new code that doesn't have that require delay in it. We'll update our flipper and then run the app, setting focus to our untitled window. It's typing in the four digit pins and pressing enter. Oh, now it looks like there's a bug where it's only typing the first three. And I had to move my mouse to get that last digit to show. So I'll let it know it mostly works, but sometimes it doesn't show until I move the mouse. It's generating a new version of the code that hopefully doesn't have that bug. We'll try running the program again. We're getting an error calling non-callable at AIJS line 31. The issue is actually on line 30. It should have used bad USB press instead of bad USB type. But let's assume you don't know that's the bug. We'll go ahead and copy line 31 with that delay 100 and see what happens. That first paragraph is pure fiction, but bad USB println does take a delay. So that second paragraph is correct. We'll update our flipper, and then we'll run the application. It looks like it's working. I'm not sure what the four is, uh, but the rest of these look like it's working correctly. And the last pin worked as well. Interesting. So that first pin it was supposed to type is one, two, three, four. I don't think it showed that uh, in the other versions at all. Uh, this time we caught the four, which was the, just the tail end. So we'll go ahead and say that that worked for everything except for the first pin only showed four instead of the expected one, two, three, four value. It looks like this time it's going to put a small delay at the beginning. We'll update our flipper and then we'll run the new code. There's our one, two, three, four pin. So that's looking good. And there you have it, all 10 pins were entered correctly. We'll start a new session with our intro text. I updated the intro text to say that it should only use built-in commands and that it shouldn't redefine anything that's in the training file. Then we'll copy our train.js files. Yesterday, someone asked me if it was possible to brute force a BETT sub gigahertz file. So I've saved one sub gigahertz file with key AAB0, and we'll see if we can brute force some other codes. 
and we'll give it that subfile so it knows what's in a subfile. Brute force is a hacking method where we're just trial and error different values. Again, only try this on equipment you own. Even then, it's possible your equipment has denial of service protection that would detect a brute force attack and then lock out valid requests as well. Uh, so typically, I recommend doing this only in a lab environment in addition to equipment you own. Go ahead and update your flipper with the code, and then we'll run the application. We got the error failed to open file at AIJS line 26. We'll tell ChatGPT about our error, including copying the contents of line 26. So the issue is this program expects that we already have those subfiles on our Flipper Zero, um, but I was hoping for a program that wouldn't need any files on our Flipper Zero. It would just work when we ran it, other than the obviously the original file that we have. We'll update the Flipper with our new code, and then we'll run the new application. It just keeps saying the file does not exist and all the attempts that it's using. So we'll let it know we keep getting file does not exist error with each of the files. And so for this iteration, it's going to make a version that will actually write the file to the SD card before it sends it. So we'll update our flipper zero code. And then we'll run the application. We got a type error on line 57, so we'll tell it about that. It'll generate another version. We'll run that and get an error. I have word wrap turned on, so we need to make sure we copy both of those so we get the entirety of line 55. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. We'll update our flipper, and then we'll run the application. I'm not sure how many attempts that was, but it's finally working. So my top flipper is running the brute force attack and my other flipper is running a sub gigahertz read and you can see those signals being sent. This protocol uses a dip switch, which is either 1110 or 00, which means 01 is not a valid bit pattern. If we look at all of our hex digits, we can see seven of the digits are invalid because they contain a 01 in them. So we'll request a version that doesn't use the digits one, four, five, six, seven, nine, or D, but it can use any of the other digits. And we can see valid digits contains all the other hex digits. We'll update our flipper and then we'll run the script. So our new version is able to brute force what would have taken 24 hours in about two hours but it required us understanding something about how the protocol actually works. Please take a moment to like and subscribe and join my Discord server to let me know what features you'd like to see in JavaScript. If you've watched my other videos and thought this intro seemed a little bit different, that's because it was written by ChatGPT. ChatGPT also wrote all of the scripts I used in the video including that pin unlock you saw in the intro, the no programming skills needed splash, blinking the GPIO lights, and even the gyroscope app. It also proposed the topics that we covered in the video. Thanks again for watching the video. Let me know in the comments what you want to create with ChatGPT and JavaScript.